Hello, and thanks for using TickBoom, a free service that helps high school students with their math problems. In this video, I'm looking at question 27 of the Blacktown Boys High School 2020 Year 12 Math Advanced Trial. Uh, this is another question that I work through with one of the students who I teach face to face. Uh, we actually did manage to work through all of this in our session, but I thought it was an interesting enough question and quite instructive that it was probably worth uh, recording my solution just to share with, with the wider audience, with anyone else who might find it helpful to understand how to tackle this one. So the question tells us that the chocolate consumption per person per day of a population of people was found to be normally distributed with a mean of 68.95 grams and a standard deviation of 18.45. So there's three parts to the question. Part A says, above what chocolate consumption rate does 2.5% of this population lie? Part B says, Rahul consumed 50.5 grams of chocolate in one day. What percentage of this population have a chocolate consumption rate more than Rahul's? And finally, part C says, if Ben takes a sample of people from this population, and he finds that six of them consume less than 13.6 grams of chocolate per person per day. If Ben's sample size has, a, has the same distribution as this population, what is Ben's sample size? And the reason I think this is an interesting question is because it kind of tackles uh, quite a few of the statistics concepts that you may encounter on your exam. So here we're looking at the normal distribution, and as you'll see when I work through the solution, we're kind of looking at how um, various amounts of the population is spread within one, two, and three standard deviations of the mean. And um, I, really, I really think it's great that um, these kind of statistical concepts are now in the syllabus. Back when I did my HSC, we didn't really cover this stuff. And I first encountered it when I did my actuarial studies program at uni. And I remember thinking at uni, why didn't we learn this stuff earlier? This stuff is so valuable and so practical and useful. It really would have been great to be learning this stuff back in high school. And the good news is now, now you do. So um, I'm quite glad to see a question like this on an exam. And um, as you'll see, uh, with a bit of knowledge of, of the basic ideas of the normal distribution, you can you can comfortably get all the marks on offer with this question. All right, so part A. Basically, um, we want to know above what consumption um, does two and a half percent of the population lie. And at this point, I think it might be useful to actually draw up a normal distribution and annotate on kind of what um, the, the kind of standard results are because this 2.5% figure, when you read this question, hopefully it jumps out at you. It's a, quite a common figure and, and you should straight away kind of uh, anticipate where you're going to end up. So if I just um, plot up say a normal curve, um, this won't be the best curve, but the idea is it should peak in the middle and be um, perfectly symmetrical about its mean. So if I pick the midpoint here, that would be the mean, the mean mu. And the basic idea is that if I was to say draw lines to represent um, say one, two and three standard deviations from the mean and in theory these should be equidistant around the mean so we'll have um, one sigma two sigma three sigma and the same on the other side so coming back sigma coming back two sigma and coming back three sigma from the mean um, and it's probably worth noting in our case the mean we were given was 68.95 uh, grams of chocolate and our sigma was 18.45. Um, so this 
So there's, there's a few things we can know are always going to be true. Um, maybe I'll use some colors to annotate. Uh, between one standard deviation around the mean, so between here and here, approximately, so not exactly, but if we're kind of rounding to no decimal places, 68% um, of our data points, or our population, falls within this, this part of the curve. So we capture 68% of our population within one standard deviation on each side of the mean. So that's um, a useful thing to know. What it means though is that in the tails, so in the rest of the curve, which goes on forever but keeps getting smaller and smaller, so less and less uh, data points fall within the extremities of the tail. But in theory, if you were to add it all up, the, remaining, the remainder of the 100% must lie on either side. And because the curve is symmetrical, it's an equal amount. So if we were to say, well, what's left after 68%, um, hopefully you'd see it's 32, but if you're not sure, you can put it in your calculator, 1 minus 0 0.68, 32. But you divide it by 2 so that you're evenly spreading it across each tail. So what we'd know is 16% of the population is above this first standard deviation and 16% is below one standard deviation. Now what I might do is um, keep going with two and three standard deviations because you'll see um, hopefully this number pop up and it's going to essentially tell us how to do this part A. So maybe I'll use black here. So if we now think about between two standard deviations of the mean, approximately 95% of the uh, population will fall in this part of the curve. And hopefully that makes sense because we're capturing more of the curve, so naturally more of it should fall within that range. So again, using a similar logic, that means the remaining 5% must be on either side. And um, if we just annotate that on, uh, what we'll get is our number 2.5% on each side, because 5% divided by 2 is 2.5%. And, and uh, that's essentially what we need to consider here. But just for completeness, I'll now um, throw on three standard deviations from the mean. So between here and here. Now clearly I haven't drawn this normal curve to scale. If, if, if it was drawn up precisely, um, you know, these figures would look much more realistic, but the basic ideas are what's important. So between three standard deviations on either side of the mean, 99.7% of the population falls there. So between here, and here, all of the points in between, that's going to cover 99.7% of the population, leaving 0.3% to fall on these other sides. Um, and if we do 0.3%, and I'll just plug this in, 0.3 um, divided by 2, it would be 0.15% on either side. To, to make up the final 100% of the population. So I think that uh, knowing this is going to be the key to all three parts of this question actually, as we'll see. Um, the good news is that you don't have to memorize this. Um, you, you can uh, rest assured that in your, uh, I guess, cheat sheet as they call it or the list of formulas and key results that you are provided in your HSC um, essentially the, the 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 standard normal curve will be provided and you'll get given these results so that you don't have to worry about forgetting them um, okay so now thinking about how we tackle part a well we know that above this second standard deviation that's where two, 
um, and a half percent of the population lie. So we can we can right away go well. What is mu plus two sigma? In our case, it's sixty eight point nine five plus two times eighteen point four five. And if I just plug that into the calculator, so we get sixty eight point nine five plus two times eighteen point four five. 105.85 grams um, is, is the figure. That's the consumption rate above which 2.5% of the population lies. So doing that on an exam, you'd, you'd write that out in full. Um, I'll, I'll just leave it there because, um, I mean, that, that's the, the basic math that you have to do. And, and the key to that was just understanding this curve. and and kind of um, knowing these key cutoff points around the, the one, two, and three sigmas from the mean. Panic boom! All right, so that's part A. Um, part B, maybe I'll, I'll turn over because we're gonna wanna draw up another um, curve. So um, for part B, we're asked um, what percentage of the population is above 50.5 grams. So this is similar to part A, except in part A we were given the percentage and we wanted the consumption rate. Now we're given the consumption rate and we want the percentage in terms of what's above. So if I just get my uh, ruler here, we're still thinking about drawing a curve and we're still thinking about um, kind of, we've got our mean at the midpoint, which um, is 68.95. And we're given this consumption rate 50.5, which we know lies on this side of the mean, 50.5. And we want to know what percentage of the population is above that, so this part of the the curve. And um, what we can do is we can in effect normalize this curve to get it in terms of the standard normal curve where the mean is transformed to be zero and what we want to know is what figure on this standard normal curve equates to 50.5 on, on this curve, because it will have the same shape, um, but if we can end up with a, a Z score, as they call it, that's, um, I guess, one of our standard figures, then we can kind of get our percentage. And chances are you're always gonna end up with a Z score that is either one, two, or three standard deviations from the mean in an exam, because otherwise you would need Z tables, you would need detailed tables giving you percentages at lots of different points and um, you don't get that, you just get this, this kind of simplified table. So if we think about the Z score, which would be our particular value minus mu on sigma, that's another formula you get given so you don't have to memorize. In our case that's 50.5 minus 68.95 all divided by our standard deviation, which is 18.45. So let's key that in and hopefully we get a standard number. So 50.5 minus 68.95 divided by 18.45, negative one. So this relates to negative one. What that means is um, minus one sigma there's 16%. This here, if I use a new color, represents 16%, which means this here represents 16% because they're the same shaped curves. So whilst the actual absolute numbers might be different, the percentage is identical, notwithstanding my poorly drawn um, curves, they, they are the same percentage. So what we can say is, um, therefore, the percentage above 50.5 is equal to 1 minus the percentage below 
50.5, which means it's 1 minus this. This is the percentage below 50.5, which is 16%, and that is 84%. And it's always worth checking. You haven't made a mental arithmetic error, so 1 minus 0.16 is 0 0.84, 84%. Panic boom! So that's part B. So again, um, as you would have noticed, the key to this was, well, you, you had to um, appreciate this formula for normalizing a curve, which you're given. So um, it's not like you need to memorize it. It's not that complicated to memorize anyway. But once you notice that the cutoff point is one of our key, key um, cutoff points in our standard curve, uh, the answer kind of just Falls, at, falls into your lap there, it's that 16%. Um, so now we'll move on to part C. Again, I want to draw up a curve, so I might just turn over, but um, there'll be no, no, no prizes for guessing uh, what we're going to need here, because if you kind of take a look at um, this curve, <clears throat> we've, we've used this result, and we've used this result, so you can kind of see how the person who wrote this question um, are kind of leading to go, well, chances are we're going to need this result. Um, and they've kind of gotten us to make use of all, all of these standard results in this question, which is quite, why I think it's quite nice and quite instructive. Um, so for part C, we were told that six people consumed less than 13.6 grams um, in, a, in a sample, so we, we had a sample of people, six of them consumed less than 13.6 grams. Um, we're also told that the sample is, it, it follows the same distribution as the population. Um, now often you'll see wording like the sample, you have a representative sample, so you've randomly selected and there's been no bias and that kind of thing. Um, that's, that's what initially jumped out to me when I read that statement in the question, but actually the statement is saying something slightly different. What it's really saying is that the sample and the population, they follow the same distribution, which means kind of like what we had here, the percentages below certain cutoffs will be the same. Um, so again, let's just uh, draw up a little curve here. So once again, we've got our midpoint at the mean, which is um, 68.95. Now we're told that um, at this point, 13.6, less than that in, in our sample represented six people. And the question here that we're being asked is, um, what is the size of the sample? How many people? If six people fell below this cutoff point, how many people are there in the sample altogether? Again, I think the technique that we'll use here is we can um, normalize the curve. So let's get our standard normal distribution where the midpoint, the mean, is zero. And so we want to know what's the equivalent cutoff point um, to kind of reflect here at six people what percentage. So we'll get our Z score. Z is equal to X minus mu on sigma. In this case, our X is 13.6 minus 68.95 on 18.45. Now I'm expecting this to come out at negative three, but obviously we gotta key it in and see. 13.6 minus 68.95 divided by 18.45, negative three, perfect. And the reason I knew that is because we had negative um, one and we had um, two already in terms of our two standard deviations of the mean. So now we're dealing with the third standard deviation from the mean. So um, what this means is as a percentage, so I probably should have stayed there to have a look. What it means is that this amount in the tail here is 0.15%. So therefore, 
um, six people uh, e equates to 0.15% of the sample. And the reason we can say that is because the sample has the same distribution as the population, so the percentages will um, be equivalent. So therefore, um, the sample size will be equal to, if I bring the 0.15 over, we'll get 6 divided by 0.15%, which will be equal to, let's just key that in, so 6 divided by, I'll do 0.15% divided by 100, because it's 0.15 percent, and that's 4,000. So the sample size was 4,000 people. Click, boom. And that's how you answer that question. So, yeah, um, kind of looking through, as I mentioned, it all kind of came down to understanding this result and how many standard deviations from the mean um, captures certain percentages of the population and we've covered all three of the results in this three-part question. So, um, and they've all been kind of asked in slightly different ways. We had the percentage and we asked for the consumption rate. Um, then we had the consumption rate and then we were asked for the percentage. And then this final question was um, worded in a little bit of a tricky way. Um, you kind of had to be comfortable with this idea that the sample being equivalent to the population um, meant that you could um, kind of do this math and, and get to your sample size. It, it's a bit of an awkward wording. I think there's room for some kind of potential debate about whether it's the best way to word the question because um, having representative samples and ensuring that you're selecting truly randomly from a population to get your sample is a, is a big deal in statistics and maybe it's not fully explored in the HSC syllabus but when you get to uni you spend a lot of time on that and so once you've been through that and got your head in that headspace um, that might be where you naturally jump to when you see a statement like that you think oh well they're just saying the sample was representatively selected um, that's good but does that really help but actually what, what the question writer is really getting at is you can make these equivalent. So the number of people and the percentage can be equated and then sold for what the total people must be. So hopefully that's all been helpful for you. If you did find my explanation helpful, please be sure to give it a like. And if you're someone who wants to keep their finger on the pulse with the kinds of questions that other students are struggling with, be sure to subscribe to my channel so that you can stay in the loop. All right, tick boom.